So you want to start learning about electronics, Arduino, and programming. Well look no further, because these 10 projects are the absolute coolest way to do that. First up, this robot dog called Biddle, which can be built by anyone, even beginners, thanks to its awesome kit and easy to follow tutorials. And it's actually crazy powerful. Not only can it crawl, walk, or run, it can also do flips, push-ups, or tons of other cool actions. You can even program it to do whatever actions you want using their custom software. And you can also connect additional modules like gesture sensors or voice control. The only downside? It is a bit expensive, so let's try something a little more DIY. For example, this DIY alarm clock. It has a unique display made of RGB LEDs that can display any time in any color. It also uses an SD card to play sounds for the alarm, so you can wake up to whatever sound you want. Wake up! Wake up, sleepies! Also, it only requires a few components and no soldering, so it's a great project for beginners to get started with. And speaking of clocks, here's an even cooler one. This arc reactor clock. This is an awesome recreation of the arc reactor from Iron Man, and in addition to glowing any color, it can also tell you the time. But even better, it's made from a kit that you can buy and build for yourself. It even has a video tutorial, though it is in French, so unless vous parlez français, you'll have to use the captions. If you like video tutorials but you want them to be in English, try the next project. This is the Microcade. It's this cute little arcade machine that comes as a kit, so you can build it for yourself. But don't let its small size fool you. That's mean by my size, do you? Hmm? It actually comes preloaded with 30 games, but you can install over 200 freely available games. And you can even make your own or modify games that other people have made. But what's really cool is that it's an all-inclusive kit. If you don't have a soldering iron, just select that option, and your kit will come with all of the tools you need. And like I said before, it comes with a completely free set of video tutorials that walk you through the entire process. I did want to include a quick note here to say that I'm not sponsored by any of the projects on this list, although some of them are my projects. I just wanted to share a list of projects I think are really cool and easy enough for beginners. And if you need links for any of them, they're all in the description right below that awesome subscribe button. This might look like a bomb made of dynamite that's going to explode in a few seconds. In fact, that's kind of the point of it. It's actually just a timer, made with a clock module for keeping time, a rotary encoder for setting the timer length, and an Arduino to bring it all together. I mean, there's also a few pieces of PVC wrapped in paper and painted to look like dynamite, and some random electronics to increase the fear factor, but at the end of the day, it's really just a fun little project that is useful as a timer and will scare the living daylights out of anyone who witnesses it. And if you're worried about what people might do to you after you scare them with this bomb prop, that's where our next project comes in. An RFID door lock. Now, the tutorial uses this cardboard house with an opening door as an example, but once you understand the concept, you can easily apply it to making an actual lock for an actual door. The technology is called RFID, or Radio Frequency Identification. Basically, inside of a card or a keychain tag, you have a little chip that stores a code. And when you hold it next to the reader, the reader wirelessly powers the chip, the chip sends the code over and the reader decides whether or not to unlock the door based on that code. This is exactly how the locks on your hotel room work, but the cool thing is you can build this same lock setup for like $20 with an Arduino and RFID reader and a couple of things to read. But our next project is an even cooler thing. Have you ever seen one of those TVs or maybe a gaming monitor with the lights behind it that take whatever's on the screen and blast it on the wall behind the screen as well? Well, you can actually make one of those with some cheap LEDs and an Arduino. All you have to do is place the LED strips around the edge of the TV on the back, wire them up to an Arduino and a power supply, and use some code that someone else already wrote to configure them. And it looks absolutely amazing, especially considering you can make it for under $60. But here's another thing you can make for a surprisingly low price. 
This little Arduino board doesn't look very dangerous, but it is. In addition to the regular chip that makes it run like a regular Arduino board, it also has an additional chip that allows it to interface with the computer in the same way that a keyboard or a mouse does. But why is this dangerous? Well, the first thing we do is package up this Arduino like a flash drive using a 3D printed casing and a USB adapter. Then we tell the Arduino to act like a keyboard, open up PowerShell, and start typing some malicious code. And depending on what that code is, we can cause a whole variety of things to happen on that person's computer. But if that's too serious for you, how about we make a game instead? This is a maze, but rather than having to pick it up and turn it around with your own hands, you have to control it with a joystick. By combining two servo motors, each rotating a different axis, we can control the rotation of the maze in two directions. And what better way to do that than a joystick? The best part is, once you've made the core electronics, you can swap in whatever maze you create to constantly give your players, or yourself, a new challenge. But what if you don't feel like solving these mazes yourself? That's where our next project comes in. This is a line-following robot. Once you build and program it, it does all of the work itself, following whatever course you draw autonomously. But how does it work? Well, on the bottom of the robot, each side has an IR sensor, which just tells the robot how bright the ground beneath it is. Now, if both sensors are seeing a light value close to white, the robot can go forward. If both sensors are seeing a dark value close to black, the robot will stop. But if one sensor is seeing black and the other is seeing white, the robot can just turn until that's not the case, and then it can continue going forward. You can even take it a step further and have the robot start solving mazes all on its own. Now, if you want more project ideas, I have another video right here where I take a look at 10 more, this time starting with beginner projects, but then ratcheting it up all the way to the most advanced and coolest projects I could possibly find. So definitely check that out. I'll see you over there.